Hello, Josie Wales here and welcome to this combat mission Battle for Normandy after action report. This scenario is Lonsdale's block from the Market Garden module. And I am playing head to head against Pericles from the Battlefront forums. Pericles has his own YouTube channel called Rational Assessments which I have included a link to in the description. I am playing as the British 1st Airborne Division with Pericles playing as the Germans. The mission is to occupy the area around the town of Oosterbeek and hold this north side of the Rhine until the arrival of 30 Corps. Task Force Lonsdale has been tasked with holding the five objectives shown on the map. Each objective is worth 100 points. To achieve the objectives, I have an ad hoc force made up of remnants from 1st and 3rd Parachute Battalions and also 2nd Battalion South Staffordshire Regiment. Making up around about 25% of the starting force are the remnants under Major J Lonsdale. Elements of 1st Parachute Battalion consist of 3 Parachute Infantry Platoons and 1 AT Section armed with Piats. Elements of 3rd Parachute Battalion consist of 2 depleted Parachute Infantry Platoons making both of these parachute battalions little more than company sized when combined. Supporting Major Lonsdale's group is 1x heavy machine gun, 1x forward observer and 1 6 pounder anti-tank gun. To the left of Major Lonsdale's force is G Squadron Glider Infantry consisting of 3 flights and their own attached forward observer. Behind and to the right of Major Lonsdale's force is Major A. Bush's Air Landing Force, consisting of a company-sized element from 2nd Battalion South Staffordshire Regiment made up of four platoons, and support units including 2 times 6 pounder anti-tank guns and 2 times heavy machine guns. In the rear are F Troop of No. 3 Battery of the 1st Air Landing Light Regiment Royal Artillery with 1x75mm pack howitzer. And next to them are C Troop of No. 2 Battery consisting of 2x75mm pack howitzers. Off map I have a battery of 4.5 inch medium guns. I also have 2 times target reference points. And 10 minutes after the start of the battle, a company from the Royal Army Service Corps is due to arrive. The town of Oosterbeek is flanked on the east and west by farmland, with open ground to the south and wooded areas to the northeast and northwest. All the objectives are in the built up area. The church inside the observation post objective gives the best observation across the entirety of the map. Units positioned here can see into just about all of the other objectives. But as usual, it will be a magnet for enemy fire. At the northern edge of the map on my left flank is Hill North. And although this is the highest ground point on the map, the fact that it is bordered by trees in all directions will hinder observation. Scattered around the map are two and three storey buildings which provide observation in a variety of directions and distances. Cover is provided by these buildings as well as by plenty of low walls and some high walls. Concealment is provided by trees, bushes and some short lengths of the Dutch equivalent of bocage. Running from east to west along the southern flank, my right flank of the town, is a metre high embankment providing some cover but little concealment. The buildings and walls are obstacles to vehicles with the high walls also being obstacles to infantry. I have identified three pieces of key terrain on this map. The first being the church on the observation post objective because of its commanding views across the map and the fact that it's the strongest structure in the town. The second piece of key terrain is the area immediately to the west of the two center objectives. Securing this area here means that I can quickly react and adapt to any threat to the center block, the school district, or the observation post. The third and final piece of key terrain I have identified is a two-story building just to the west of Hill North. 
it allows good observation to the buildings around Five Points and some observation into the Five Points objective itself. The plan is to occupy and secure the centre block, school district and observation posts objectives. G Squadron will form a skirmish line to protect the left flank. If the option presents itself, this line will probe towards the Five Points objective, but it is not a priority. The force under Major Lonsdale would advance eastwards, with the elements of 3rd Battalion occupying the centre block and school district objectives. The elements of 1st Battalion will remain behind them in KT2 to support as required. The South Staffordshires will occupy the observation post objective, whilst the rest of the support units will remain further back. As this is a meeting engagement, I will assume that my opponent's start position is on the eastern edge of the map. From my perspective, there are multiple avenues of approach for him. He could hook round my left flank and then potentially go on to threaten my rear, although direct movements from his start position onto each of the objectives seems more likely. The rightmost avenue of approach can potentially threaten two of the objectives. With this in mind, I place one of my two target reference points on the avenue of approach most likely for my opponent to take to the school district. The second target reference point is placed between the five points objective and the centre block. The thinking behind this is to intercept with artillery any threat that my opponent might make from the five points objective onto the centre block. Once my forces are deployed, I am envisaging this type of battle line. As you can see, the line has a salient, which is why the second target reference point is being placed where it is. The time is 0900 hours. I have one hour to achieve the objectives. The conditions are light fog and rain. The air temperature is cool. The ground is wet and the wind is gentle from the west. On the left, G Squadron fan out into their skirmish line. One of the six pounder AT guns is sent to the left flank to support them. G Squadron's forward observer gets into key terrain three to observe the five points objective. In the centre, units of the 3rd Parachute Battalion move to occupy the centre block and school district objectives, whilst the 1st Parachute Battalion moves into the Key Terrain 2 area. Come on! on the right, the South Staffordshire's move to occupy the Observation Post objective. The second six-pounder anti-tank gun is sent to support the right flank. At the rear, 75mm pack house is deployed. And the FO team under Major Lonsdale find a suitable OP away from danger. A German heavy machine gun is spotted on the right. It is covering German infantry advancing towards the observation post objective. Oh, the Germans are mouse holing into some of the buildings. At the rear, the pack howitzers are ready for use. In the centre, 6th platoon of the 3rd battalion elements occupy the centre district, whilst 4th platoon secure the school. German infantry are spotted moving towards the centre from the east.
One of four platoon sections moves into TRP-1 block to try and draw the enemy in closer. Back on the right, the firefight is heating up for the South Staffordshire. Third battalion elements take contact in the centre. German squad is caught out in the open. The church tower starts to receive incoming mortar fire. The survivors get down to a safer floor. As predicted, Germans start moving into the TRP-1 area. And 4th Platoon's lead section pull back to the school as the strike is called in. The first volley is wide. But the subsequent ones hit a bit closer to the mark. join in on the act. On the left flank, G Squadron spot German infantry moving to occupy the five points objective. On the far left, an additional 80 men from 250 Company of the Royal Army Service Corps arrive under Lieutenant Fagan. Strategic Update 1 0, 9, 10 hours, 10 minutes into battle. Major Lonsdale's force is covering the centre. With 6 platoon of the 3rd Battalion elements occupying the centre district objective, and 4th platoon securing the school district objective. On their left, G Squadron has spread out to screen the left flank. One of the AT guns is supporting them. Behind them, 250 Company have arrived. The right is being secured by Major Bush's force, with 9 platoon of the South Staffordshire's occupying the observation post objective, which includes the church. A second AT gun is supporting the right flank, whilst the third has yet to be deployed. At the rear, the pack howitzer battery has deployed, but it's not in the best firing position due to the howitzer's low trajectory. My opponent is advancing on four main avenues of approach. On the left, he is moving in to occupy the five points objective. In the centre, two columns are converging on the centre block objective. Another two columns are converging on the school district 
right through the TRP block. On the right, my opponent has secured the east block objective and is making his way towards the church. The artillery barrage called on TRP-1 did not seem to have much impact. The battle lines are so far like so. With the arrival of 250 Company of the Royal Army Service Corps, I can afford to have one flight of G-Squadron probe forward on their far left flank. The centre and right will hold. I have plenty of reserves behind the lines in KT-2 to reinforce as required. In the centre, 4th and 6th platoon of 3rd battalion attempt to absorb the German advance. Germans are using smoke to conceal their movements. The six pounder AT gun on this flank is almost in position comes under direct water fire. On the far right, a Stug 3 is spotted bearing down on the church. An attempt is made to blind it with smoke. left, German infantry continue to filter onto the five points objective. The second Stug 3 is also spotted on five points. Stug targets buildings. The power is displaced to prevent unnecessary casualties. On the far left, one flight of G Squadron probed this flank. 250 Company filing behind them. Catch German infantry manoeuvring in the open. German advance, some of 250 Company counterattack towards five points. First platoon of G Squadron make contact with German infantry to the north of the five points objective.
taking a few casualties without successfully spotting the enemy, they break contact and pull back. In the centre, more German infantry move in. In response, the first parachute battalion elements that were holding position in key terrain too move up to support the third battalion elements that are currently engaged. Simultaneously, the second strike with the four and a half inch guns is called in on TRP-1. From out of nowhere, two German squads break cover and are dashed to the centre block objective. As the squads are decimated, a third Stug is spotted as it rushes forward, stopping just yards in front of 6 platoon. As the barrage lifts on the TRP-1 block, a section from 4th platoon move in. As they enter the smoke-filled block, all hell breaks loose. causes many casualties but is wiped out to a man. On the right, a fourth Stug 3 is spotted on the east block. There are now two Stugs bearing down the church. Another two inch tube is used to bring more smoke onto these two Stugs before they can do too much damage. The gun which survived the mortar attack is taken out. Emboldened by the arrival of the Stugs on this flank, German infantry make a dash towards the church. But are initially turned back. As the smoke builds up around the Stugs, Piat team moves into the church. Both Stugs rush forward with more infantry support. One of the Stugs is taken out and the infantry are sent packing. Strategic update 2, 0918 hours, 18 minutes into battle. On the left, G Squadron is screening this flank. 250 Company have been moved forwards. Zooming in on this flank, we can get a better look at the G Squadron positions. On the far left, one flight probed to see if there was a way to flank the five points objective, but withdrew after a short firefight. Both two and three flight are screening the left flank of the centre block, 
whilst attempting to avoid fire from the Stug on this flank. The 250 Company reinforcements have been deployed forward, with their 2nd platoon forming up behind one flight of G Squadron and 1st platoon probing towards the 5 points objective. In the centre, the elements of 3rd Parachute Battalion have taken the brunt of the impact from my opponent's advance. The elements of 1st Parachute Battalion are in position to support them. Zooming in, we can get a better look at the centre positions. 6th Platoon of 3rd Battalion are based around the centre block. They are dealing with a Stug 3 at close range. 4th Platoon are in the TRP 1 block, in advance of the school district. 1st Battalion are now partially committed. 1st Platoon are on the left, with some elements moving into the centre block. 2nd Platoon in the centre, and are also moving towards the centre block objective. 3rd Platoon have moved into the school district objective. On the right of the formation are the elements of the 2nd Battalion South Staffordshire Regiment, whose current task is to hold the observation post objective. On the left are 11th Platoon, who are staying in reserve and can be deployed to either support the school district or observation post. Occupying the ground between the school district and observation post is 12th Platoon, who were briefly attacked by one of the Stugs on this flank, which rushed forward and then pulled back. 9th Platoon are holding the observation post and have just managed to destroy a Stug with a Piat round that got too close. And 10th Platoon have been kept in reserve. Both forward observers are struggling to get good lines of fire for the three 75mm pack howitzers, resulting in the howitzers having to redeploy in different positions to try and get good lines of fire. The two remaining 6-pounder anti-tank guns have been deployed so that there is one on each flank. My opponent's avenues of advance have been along these axes. I have currently secured the school district and observation post objectives. My opponent has secured the east block and five points objectives. The centre block is currently contested. And the battle lines look like this. In the centre and the right, the plan is pretty much working, so it doesn't require a drastic rethink at this point. On the left, however, I have already amended my initial plan, which was to just screen this flank. With the arrival of 250 Company of the Royal Army Service Corps, I have felt emboldened to make a push for the five points objective. All I'm hoping to do here is to contest the objective with 250 Company's first platoon. Simultaneously, second platoon will make a more aggressive attempt to break through on the far left. To find out whether I pull off my strategy or whether Pericles catches me off guard, stay tuned for part two.